First up, parallelogram steering linkage. The main parts are the pitman arm, which is connected to the steering gear, center link, idler arm, inner tie rod, tie rod adjusting sleeve, outer tie rod, and some include a steering damper, which is like a small shock absorber. The point of this linkage is to connect the steering gear to the front wheels. Out of camber, caster, and toe, steering linkages only affect front toe. To keep the toe at the correct angle, the tie rods must stay parallel to the lower control arms. Any worn or bent components change this relationship, thus changing toe. Simple. If any one of these components is worn, it can cause steering wheel free play, front shimmy, and incorrect front toe. Any bent item will cause incorrect toe and must be replaced. Check the front toe alignment after replacing any of the shown components. If you get asked on the test, if the center link is at an improper height, is it going to affect the camber angle? Nope, steering linkages only affect toe. You should know the general procedure to changing steering linkage components using a puller, torque specification, stuff like that. Can worn or bent steering linkages cause a pull while driving straight ahead? Nope, they will cause what is known as bump steer, which is the vehicle suddenly swerving to one side when hitting a bump. Remember that front wheels with incorrect toe will try to equalize while driving. A bump disrupts this equalization, leading to bump steer. Simple, right? Memory steer happens when the steering wheel does not want to return to center after a turn. The vehicle keeps turning, you have to manually force the steering wheel back to the center. This usually happens because something is binding or seizing. A great example would be binding steering shaft universal joints. Can steering linkages cause memory steer? Sure, idler arms or tie rod ends that are seizing can cause memory steer. Up next is the rack and pinion steering linkage. This one has less parts. Basically, it has inner tie rods that are directly connected to the steering gear and outer tie rods. The same principles that apply to parallelogram steering linkages apply here. The tie rods must stay parallel to the lower control arms. Any bent items must be replaced. Any worn components will cause excessive steering wheel free play, bump steer, shimmy, and incorrect front toe. Check the toe angle after replacing a tie rod. One new thing here is the steering gear has these mounting bushings. If these are excessively worn or loose, then the tie rods won't be parallel to the lower control arms. And by now, we all know what that causes. Here's a quick demo on front toe adjustment. For rack and pinion steering, you will loosen up this jam nut. And using a tool like this, you will rotate the inner tie rod. For parallelogram steering, you would loosen the two bolts on the sleeve and turn it with the tool like this. After you have completed the adjustments, torque the bolts on the adjusting sleeve to specification. And make sure the clamp is positioned away from the sleeve's slot. Clamp away from the slot, as shown here. Parallelogram steering will most likely use a recirculating ball steering gear and rack and pinion steering will use a rack and pinion steering gear. And that wraps it up for this video. See you in video number four.